In this tutorial we're going to learn how to make a big cinematic auto pan pad. Um, so we're just going to start off with a very very basic, very simple preset uh, without any sort of effects processing on. And then we're slowly going to use some post-production type processing to create the timbre and to create the sort of big atmospheric sound. So let's just have a little listen to the chords that are programmed and the preset that has been selected for this. So there's our basic preset that we've just selected and any sort of decent pad sound from your library or previous presets that you've saved will work well for this technique. So I'm just going to mute this mute this uh, original pad sound and we're going to have a little look at the pad that we are going to process. So the first thing we need to do is turn the output away from stereo output to actually no output. So by default in Logic, uh, you are assigned an output and we need to make sure that that's not actually going anywhere because we don't want the original signal to be heard at all in the mix. So we're going to go to no output and we're going to send the signal to two buses. So we send it one to bus one and bus two, which are there and there. Now we'll have that same sound and it will just be coming through these two channels here. We're going to pan them slightly in opposition, not fully hard uh, left and hard right, but somewhere in between center and left. So I've gone for minus 35 and plus 35. Um, and as we can see there, that uh, sounds the same. So there's no difference there so far. Next, we are going to turn on and initiate a tremolo plugin. Now, some doors may uh, have this as an auto pan, uh, but some uh, may not and may have this sort of functionality built into their tremolo. Really, we're after the auto pan type feature. So the first thing we're going to do is turn the tremolo plugin on and have a little listen to what it does. So we'll just play through. And it just modulates the amplitude by these set amounts. So we want this to completely modulate the amplitude to a certain rate. We're going to have it on free rather than have it on um, divisions, musical divisions. Free will be a bit better for this. We want symmetry to be set to 50%, smoothing to up to 100, so it's not like an on-off switch like this. the sound to ramp up not be turned on and off so we want the smoothing there and then what we're going to do is we're going to offset one of the channels the, from the left and right channel um, by 180 degrees and what that means is you'll be half a cycle out so you'll essentially um, pan the vol um, modulate the volume for each channel and one will start halfway through the cycle of the other so we'll actually get essentially a left and right um, turning up of the faders for each channel which replicates a sort of auto pan so the sensation created will be um, it'll feel like the sound is panning from left to right but really just the volume is going up and down for each of the channels left and right but it's offset slightly against one another So already that's quite a cool sound uh, in itself. But what we're going to do is we, because we've got control over each of the left and the right side, what we're going to do is we're going to use this special sort of EQ um, technique. So I'll just take the link off there. Um, this sort of special EQ technique where we're going to boost the bass on the left hand channel and uh, cut the treble on the, and then do the opposite to the other channel. So we end up spectrally separating our sounds removing some mid-range there 
um, from the sound in both channels and boosting the low end and cutting the high on one and cutting the low end on one and boosting the high which gives us this result And then finally to really finish off this production technique, both of these buses are then going to be bussed to another track. So we're going to use bus 3, the pad submix. At the pad submix stage, we're going to use a reverb to kind of smear that stereo image from the two sides. Now normally you wouldn't have bass sounds panned off to one side, but with this sort of tremolo auto pan effect that will turn on and off very very quickly and because this sort of technique isn't used in the main section of a track but more in a breakdown and um, you can get away with having stuff slightly panned off center in the low end it's not as important as if it was happening in say the drop of the track so let's just have a little listen to this auto pan pad that's eq'd in opposition with the reverb being automated from dry to wet and just have a listen to what happens to the final aesthetic of the sound. So there we can hear how the deeper the mix or the, the wetter the signal as the mix goes from 0% wet and 100% dry, as that ratio starts to shift and starts to invert, we kind of can't really tell where stuff is being panned from or which side is coming through that much. It all turns into a, a bit of an ambient wash, which is really handy um, for using uh, this particular technique in line with automating the rate of the auto pattern. So I've dialed in some automation here. If we zoom in on the track, we can see that our automation is dialed in um, for the rate of the tremolo. So that's gonna increase and decrease as that goes along. So let's just have a listen to that and then we'll add in some automation of the reverb and those two controls in tandem will create a very interesting texture that can be used well in sort of ambient breakdowns in trance tracks. So we're just gonna add in some automation to our pad submix onto our reverb mix. And we're gonna dial this up in line with, we're gonna overdub some automation of this wet dry control in addition to this tremolo and we can really see how with the two in, in together we can really create a very interesting evolving sound and uh, production technique.
So finally, let's hear this technique in the context of a breakdown with a lead section as well, to hear how this type of pad sound might uh, be useful in shaping the breakdown of a trance track. <laughs> 